Unless you have been looking for your phone for the past couple of weeks, you have probably heard about the controversy surrounding Anheuser-Busch's decision to partner with Dylan Mulvaney in a new ad campaign. It's all over YouTube. Yesterday, April 14th, Anheuser-Busch stock closed at $64.56, which is about 3% lower than where it closed on Friday, March 31st, the day before Dylan Mulvaney announced the partnership with Bud Light. However, in all fairness, yesterday's close was still up about 6% compared to where it had been a month ago on March 14th. I am Dr. John Padfield. I am a business professor, and this is Business Reform, where I discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. I try to avoid politics on this channel to the degree that I can, while still offering meaningful commentary on business, technology, and society, all of which are impacted by politics. This video is not about transgenderism, who should use which bathroom, or who should be eligible to participate in women's sports. There are plenty of other YouTubers who discuss those issues from a variety of perspectives. Instead, in this video, I want to discuss the concept of ESG and how it may have been a significant factor that contributed to Anheuser-Busch's decision to partner with Dylan Mulvaney for the new ad campaign. Before I go any further, I want to address the April 13 New York Post story, which quotes an unnamed source at Anheuser-Busch who claims no one at a senior level of Bud Light knew about the Dylan Mulvaney ad campaign, and that it was, quote, some low-level marketing staffer who was responsible for the ad. While I believe someone at Anheuser-Busch may have said that, I do not find that statement credible. I spent the first 24 years of my career working for four different Fortune 500 companies in the automotive, security products, and medical device industries. In my last position, I reported directly to a C-suite executive who was also an officer in a multi-billion dollar transnational company. In all my years of corporate experience, I have never seen a low-level marketing staffer with the authority to alter branding standards and or product packaging. The decision to hire Dylan Mulvaney to promote the brand on social media may very well have been made by a low-level staffer. However, I personally do not believe the decision to put Dylan's face on a Bud Light can was made by a low-level marketing staffer. As with all of my videos, the views expressed in this video are my own. I do not claim to represent the views of any employers, past or present. And as always, I have included links to all of my sources in the description of this video. So what is ESG? According to ESG.org, quote, ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. First coined in 2005, ESG covers a wide range of issues that may have a direct or indirect impact on financial relevance. Some of these issues that come under the purview of ESG reporting include resource management, supply chain management, organizational health, safety policies, and building trust through transparency. When I first heard about ESG, I thought it sounded like a great idea. I am all for transparency, and as I will be discussing in an upcoming Earth Day video, I am a big fan of the outdoors. I love nature, and I want to see the environment protected. For example, this 2005 story from the Seattle Times discusses how salmon caught off the coast of the northwest United States makes an 8,000-mile round trip to China to be deboned before they arrive in American grocery stores. Could the salmon be deboned in the United States to avoid wasting the diesel fuel required to send salmon to another continent and back? Sure. Would that mean that we could get fresher salmon at our local grocery stores? Absolutely. So why do companies send salmon to China? One simple answer, it's cheaper. As a consumer, I would like to know when companies do things like this so I can decide who I want to do business with, them or one of their competitors. Likewise, a February 12, 2021 article in The Guardian reported that Mars, Nestle, and Hershey, who collectively control about 90% of the chocolate market in the United States, were sued in a U.S. federal court for, quote, aiding and abetting the illegal enslavement of thousands of children on cocoa farms in their supply chains. 
Again, as a consumer, I would like to know more about the practices of companies who want my business so I can make more informed decisions about who I choose to do business with. By analogy, years ago, food companies were required to put nutrition labels on their products, which lists not only the calories, the fat, the carbs, the sugar, but also the ingredients. People are then free to ignore the labels or use them for making their own decisions. I am not wanting the government to ban Raisin Bran, but I can tell you with 46 grams of carbohydrates per serving, you won't catch me eating it. But ESG is not just a report card for consumers. On November 22, 2022, the U.S. Department of Labor announced a final rule that allows the use of ESG factors when financial plan fiduciaries are selecting retirement investments. This means companies with low ESG scores could see retirement plan funds move to companies with higher ESG scores. Both the Republican-controlled U.S. House of Representatives and the Democrat-controlled U.S. Senate passed legislation that would ban the use of ESG. But on March 20, President Biden signed his first veto of his administration to kill the ban on using ESG as a factor in retirement investments. So the bottom line is that companies with a low ESG score are at a disadvantage financially as retirement plan administrators are now free to use ESG for guiding their investments. And what does it take to get a good ESG score? In theory, the company just needs to have good environmental practices, good social practices, and good governance practices. But the exact definition of good is where the problem arises. For instance, Financial News reported on November 17, 2022, that the now-collapsed Ponzi scheme, crypto company FTX, had a higher score for corporate governance than ExxonMobil. Regarding what influences a company's social score, according to an April 12, 2023 Forbes article entitled, Was Bud Light's Dylan Mulvaney Decision About ESG?, Quote, the Corporate Equality Index put out by the Human Rights Campaign is 40% based on outward-facing policies, and a company can face an additional 25% penalty for actions which do not support the LGBTQ cause. It is not unreasonable to assume that Anheuser-Busch is trying to increase their CEI score for a better ESG rating. That last statement in the Forbes article prompted me to visit the Human Rights Campaign website to see what goes into the Corporate Equality Index. The very first thing I saw when I visited the site was a pop-up ad asking for a donation to support LGBTQ plus equality. The second thing I saw was that the CEI is, quote, the national benchmarking tool on corporate policies, practices, and benefits pertinent to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer employees. One of the criteria they measure is, quote, public commitment to the LGBTQ community. So was Anheuser-Busch's decision to partner with Dylan Mulvaney driven at least in part by ESG considerations? Only the senior leadership at Anheuser-Busch knows for sure. But hopefully you now have a better understanding of what ESG is all about and how it is likely to influence corporate decisions in the future. If you got something out of this video, please consider subscribing, and thank you for watching.